The solubility of a solute depends on the temperature of the solution, and sometimes it also depends on the pressure of the gases up above the surface of the solution. In this video, we are going to be looking at the relationship between solubility and temperature and pressure for all different types of solutes. Starting with solids and liquids, this is unfortunately a very unpredictable and unreliable relationship. Usually, most of the time, but not always, the solubility of a solid or liquid will increase as our temperature of solution increases. So typically, if we increase the temperature of a solution, this means we will be able to dissolve a greater quantity of a solid solute or a liquid solute. Again, this is only the case usually. There are examples of situations where increasing the temperature of a solution actually causes the solubility to decrease, which means that we can dissolve a lesser quantity of solids and liquids. Unfortunately, this is not a very well understood relationship in chemistry, so I'm not going to be able to provide you with a, an explanation of why it works the way that it does. If you need to know the actual temperature and solubility relationship for a particular solid or liquid solute, you will need to, to look that information up. Fortunately for gases, the relationship is much more predictable. For gas solutes, we see, again, usually, but this is pretty much all of the time, the solubility of a gas decreases as temperature increases. So it's the opposite what we see for a solid and a liquid. Solubility decreases as temperature increases. So what this means practically is that if you have a solution that has a dissolved gas solute in it, if you increase the temperature of the solution, this is going to cause the solubility of the gas to decrease. We might see literally the gas solutes bubbling up out of solution. The solubility of gases also depends on the pressure of the gas up above the surface of the liquid. And this is actually a very well understood relationship. We actually have a mathematical equation that we can use to model this. This equation is called Henry's Law. Henry's Law is the law that helps us determine the solubility of a gas inside a, a solution based on the pressure up above the surface of the solution. Henry's Law says that C equals K times P. In this equation, C is the concentration in units of molarity of the gas inside the solution. K is a constant, we call Henry's constant, and it is dependent on the actual gas molecule. So if you're using this equation, you need to know which value of K you should use. And then P, last but not least, is the pressure of the gas above the surface of the solution. And this is used in units of atmospheres. So let's say, for example, we have a bottle of soda, something like this, and it's sealed up. And we wanted to know the concentration of the gas solute, the carbon dioxide, dissolved in this particular soda. Uh, we would use, to, to solve this problem, we would use the pressure of the gases in this area up above the surface of the soda. When we bottle soda up, we typically, it's typically bottled under a pressure of five atmospheres. That's very high pressure, five atmospheres of CO2. This high pressure of um, carbon dioxide gas up above the surface of the solution increases the solubility of the gases in the solution because we see this direct relationship in Henry's law, direct relationship between molarity and pressure. As pressure increases, the solubility increases as well. So when the soda is bottled up and we have a very high pressure of CO2 in this space up above, we have a large amount of CO2 that is dissolved down inside this soda. Of course, as soon as we take the lid off of this container, the first time you open it, 
the pressure of CO2 drew, uh, decreases immediately so that it matches atmospheric pressure, which is about 1 atm. And as this pressure drops, as our pressure goes down, this means that the molarity, the amount of gas that has dissolved, will also go down immediately as well. And we observe that when we open the soda because all these carbon dioxide gas molecules come bubbling up out of the solution. We see fizzing up here, um, sometimes too much fizzing, and it fizzes itself right out of the bottle. And again, this is because as we, when we open the soda and the pressure of the CO2 gas up above the surface of the soda decreases, all of those CO2 molecules come up out of the solution.